I'm Sorry. That's Booby. And Colby and Chip. Uh, we have Moon Horse by Avatarium. This one is from the Epic Underground. Okay, Epic Underground, cool. If you would like to be part of a Patreon group, the reason we're doing back to back to back to back to back to back Patreon picks is because our uh, faithful Patreon folks have been uh, killing it, even when we were on leave and then we had a backlog, so that's right. why we're doing it. We're eventually, in about two or three days, gonna clear out all the Patreon stuff so we can go back to normal um, and all that jazz. If you wanna jump in, uh, ticket at the gate is one buck. Obviously, you can do more and uh, your benefits increase. Speaking of benefits, uh, I just, if you are a Static X fan, um, I forgot what tier it was on Patreon, but when we do interviews with bands, I think it's, a 10 I think or it's either or 10 or 15. It's one yeah, of those. Look it up on the on the website. But um, uh, if you're a Static X fan, um, send us some questions because we are setting up an interview with Static X. <laughs> so um, you shouldn't it, have said who. <laughs> well, I wanted to because Static X has a pretty sad but triumphant story so okay um and we're going to be covering their we're actually going to go to the show and cover them as well so um i'm saying this now if you're a static x fan um and you're at that tier um give us some questions to ask because we will ask the band for you when we um when we interview them um okay for everybody else like we said don't worry about it because we are gonna be back to normal very soon okay so this is moon horse i'm actually very Excited to hear this song because of the title of the track. Really? Yeah. Okay, ready? Go! Go!
Wow. That was very interesting. Um, I gotta tell you, I'm not a fan of doom metal because because why? I I don't like the slow trudgy feeling. Oh. But God Almighty. This one I liked. What an amazing song this was. Yeah. And that that woman can sing. I really wanted her to just belt it. it out. I, I know, but and like, I was waiting for it. I'm when like, she Come said, on, teardrop influence well, by floor. <laughs> see, I, I didn't I didn't know that she could. I was like, oh, but then when she talked about falling, the teardrops yeah. falling, and she carried that note. Yeah. I was like, Subhanallah. She did. She's a badass. I don't know who wrote the lyrics of this song, but whoever did is, I think I know what they're where they're going and what they're trying to do, but. <laughs> I am gonna take my stab at it first. Okay. Um. So, excuse me. Dun, dun, dun. So she's talking to her mother, and she's like, she keeps seeing things that look good. That's very distracting. Oh. I've got you in one ear and the rain in the other. Uh, okay. Um. So she's seeing all these different things, and she's like, see, they all sound like wonders, and all sound like good things, like. You know, is there, um, so she sees a red horse and a blue one, which that kind of like threw me off for a second because I was thinking about how like our colors are red and blue. And then um, she sees that like she's looking and she sees that and then she sees like tires down in the sea. But she says at one point that um, happy and graceful at the bottom of the sea playing like children and they look just like me. So there's something, it, it's drawing her in and it, there's like beauty and there's wonder and there's excitement for her. And so all the time when she's explaining it, it's like, well, tigers aren't really in the bottom of the sea and there's not really horses on the moon. So there's something that's other world that's like outside of this world that's kind of drawing her in. Um, and I thought it was, it was very like, seemed like very childlike, but then at the very end, like, I felt like they took like a turn and I was like, whoa. So like all that time, in my opinion, when they're talking about what she's seeing, um, it's actually, cause the very last bit there, it says, um, I feel the teardrops falling, I hear the moon horse calling, I see the black moon rivers to the night I'm given. So I feel like all of that was just like, it was like the darkness and like the whatever's in like that, that calls. You know how people will be like, I just have like this draw like to like to the darkness and stuff like that. Like I felt like that that was it. It was like, it was calling her, but it was calling her and it was looked all like these like really cool ways and then it like drew her in and then in the end like to the night she was given and even musically I thought it went along with my interpretation because it kind of had this feeling like something was kind of like coming but you didn't really know what it was and then at the end like it was just like I don't know so that's my, that's my stab at it that's what it would mean to me and so in the end she's given over to it to what? to the darkness like that like supernatural dark sort of um, mm -hmm. influences that are spiritual, but um, like the opposite of light spirituality it would be more like a dark spirituality. Yeah, I just I just saw this as a wrestling with the concept of life after death and coming to the conclusion that there is none. Oh my gosh, really? Yeah, and the reason I'm saying that is because of this line right here. Oh, mother, is your life here beyond a place in the clouds after I'm gone where mm -hmm. I can paint, play, and belong, sit with my friends, and they're singing along, which is sort of this childlike understanding. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a crack in the window, an open door. There's a place in the hollow across the moor. I see the end of the morning, my dying fear. It's the eternal dawning. Oh, take me there. So it's... Oh, so you think in the end she dies? Well, yeah, and I, I think, well, I think it's her growing up and embracing the fact that there is no life after death. Mm -hmm. The fact, because I believe that the opposite fact is true, that there is a fact that there is life after the, after death. Mm -hmm. And it's for you, dear listener, if you'll have it. But, um, and, and the reason I'm saying that is it's basically like, as silly, or I don't want to say silly, but, but there are no horses on the moon, mm -hmm. and there are no moonflowers blooming. Mm -hmm. Tigers don't go in the sea. Tigers do exist. So the hor horses exist, flowers exist, the moon exists, but the moon is not the place where horses go. Right. And tigers do not belong in the sea. Right? There, there are no tigers in the sea, swimming and breathing like dolphins. There's only dolphins, in, in, you know, and there are no tigers in the sea. Um, there are no fish in trees. That's not the place where fish belong. Right. Fish belong in the sea. 
you know, tigers possibly might be able to, so it's it's you're placing these things in places where they, it's impossible for them to belong. Oh. So human beings belong on the earth, they don't belong in the afterlife, right? So like as silly as it would be, or as childish as it would be, or as Pollyannish as it would be to, because I don't think that they're saying you're silly and childish if you believe life after death. I think they're just saying uh, as Pollyannish as it would be to believe that there are horses on the moon and fish in trees and tigers in the sea. It's just as that's in the same category as saying that humans can live after they die. Our place is in this life now. Mm -hmm. And it, it just like a, a you know fish belong in the sea, they don't belong in trees. Mm -hmm. So our place is in this life now, and and once we're done here, we're done. Mm -hmm. A fish is never gonna go hang out in a tree, right? And and tigers are never gonna be able to breathe. So we're never gonna be able to live outside of this world. This is the world that we belong in. So when you die, you die. That's it. There's no place over the moor. There's no open window for you to get to mm -hmm. get to another world. Like this is the world that we belong in. Mm -hmm. Um, which I actually agree and disagree with what she's saying because I don't believe that the end game is us living in some flowy, misty place up there. Mm -hmm. I believe the end game for us is actually this universe. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that men can go on the moon. Right. So at minimum, we've seen that we can populate, we can populate, <laughs> maybe, we can populate the universe. So I don't believe that the final existence of humanity is in some ethereal, smoky, wispy place. I believe that our home is the universe. This is where we belong in the physical universe, and this is where we're going to stay. Mm -hmm. um, so the doctrine of the resurrection means that we're going to regain our physical bodies. A lot of people don't understand this. A lot mm -hmm. of people think that when you die in Christian theology, you become a wisp or an angel or something like yeah. that, and you stay there forever playing yeah. the harp. When in reality... And you're um, bored. There's right. A lot of people think you're bored. Revelation 22 actually has heaven and earth meeting, and they're indistinguishable when it talks about the New Jerusalem uh -huh. coming down. Um, so uh, our place is in the physical universe. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, I agree. But I disagree that uh, our life doesn't continue after we die. Do I? If that's the argument they're making. Because uh, I believe that our life continues after we die. I just don't believe that we go off into an ethereal, misty place. Right. I believe we stay on the uh, in the universe because God creates in the physical universe and that's where we belong. <laughs> he talks about that we would have like resurrected bodies. Bodies, physical so, bodies, yeah. right? And we, and it also says that we would have like a body like his, right? So because not. when Jesus was risen from the dead, he came back, and when he went to see the people, he ate fish, and people like physically touched him and stuff. So he had like a body. Well, he explicitly said because it's interesting. The text says they thought he was a ghost, right? And Jesus says, "A spirit does not have flesh and bone as you see me have." Right. Um, so, right there, it's clear that uh, Luke 24, uh, blah, 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 Luke 24, verse 39, it's clear there mm -hmm. that um, we are going to be in a physical world, physical mm -hmm. universe. Um, so, M Moon Horse was very interesting to me because I think what she's saying is that we're the Moon Horse to some degree. I think maybe I'm not sure. Um, and then at the end, she says, "I feel the teardrops falling." I hear the moon horse calling, I see the black moon rivers, to the night I'm given. <clears throat> and the night would be, in my mind, a world where none of that stuff really exists. And the, the loss of that childlike wonder of all the possibilities that... Yikes. You know, when you're a kid, there's all this wonder and there's all this... And she sang it like a child almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's about losing your innocence in the... Because it is a lot... I think transitioning to that type from belief to unbelief to some degree is a loss of innocence I think yeah uh, and I, I, I'm not saying that they're bad people I think everybody would agree with this like if you were a true believer in the afterlife or whatever and then you transition out of it and you then that's why you'll hear people say oh your magic sky daddy or your fairy daddy or what they're you da daddy fair they're using language of children yeah and I think there is a loss of innocence there mm -hmm. and I do think that there's something very very childlike about our faith mm-hmm oh well it's like, like I said to enter the, you have to become like a child to enter the kingdom of God. Right, right. So, um, that's why I don't completely bristle at the, oh, you're a sky guy. I'm like, oh, whatever. Oh, okay. Uh, it, it doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so I do think that this is a very, very poetic way to say it. Of course, we both could be full of hooey and the whole thing could just be about literally moon horses and stuff she used to draw when she was a kid. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't have to be any of this stuff. She said something that was I don't really know. It seemed like it seems like your interpretation is correct. I see the end of the morning, my dying fear. It's the eternal dawning. Oh, take me there. Mm -hmm. So the end of the, of the morning, I'm assuming, is, is life. Like your life is coming to a close. And, you know, everybody fears death. But then on the other side of that is an eternal dawning. And she's saying, take me there. Mm -hmm. But then when you get to the end of the song, she's given over to the night. She's not given over to a, oh. an eternal dawn. Well. Um, so it's like... You're just holding on to this idea of an eternal dawn because you're scared of death. That's that, it, it seems to be the argument there in that stanza. And then at the end, she's like, I see the black moon rivers. Mm -hmm. You know, it, above, when she talked about the moon, all you saw were these red and blue horses and moon flowers. You didn't hear anything about a black yeah. river. Right, but at yeah. The I end, like, Whoa, took at a turn the, at the end. Sadat, at the end... You hear the moon horse calling, but all you see are black rivers, mm -hmm. you know, which is a pretty, I mean, imagine, look, although if I looked up and I saw red horses on the moon or whatever, like through a, a telescope, that would freak me out. It would? Absolutely. That would be, are you kidding me? Red and blue horses playing on the moon? On the moon? That would be completely like destabilizing. <laughs> For most of the planet. Uh, not for me. I'd be like, oh my gosh, look at this. And they probably would look cute. Yeah, that'd be a problem. I'd probably call up Alec though. I'm like, what about now though? <laughs> what about now? I like you better repent, my guy. <laughs> uh, no, that would be scary as hell. Oh, are you kidding me? No. But I, you're probably thinking, like, guess the danger and where are they coming? What do they want? Uh, and... Well, how did this happen? The real thing would be. How did Neil Armstrong miss this? I'd say, see, he yeah. didn't go. You'd say, they were, they, you'd say they weren't on the moon. How'd they miss something like that, hmm? Yeah, that would be a problem. I gotta say, the music was crazy, too. Mm -hmm. Like, some of it, like, some of the transitions were very abrupt. Uh, you know, like, when... when oh, when, I didn't notice. I thought it, I liked the There way was the no, thing. like, middle piece where... You know, like, I like in when you're doing different movements for it to, like, bleed into each other. Yeah. There were a couple times when it was just like, all right, here's a separate... You know, here's a separate riff. Like, when we first started yeah. writing music, like, I would do that. They'd be like, that's a great riff, Vin, but how do we get from there to there? Yeah. And I, I had a guy who was really good, and he'd find ways to... He basically cut one in half and cut one in half and then you bleed into it. That's a, he talked like that because he knew music theory. I didn't know what I was talking about. But so there were a couple times when they were like, I remembered that. And I'm like, Ralph would go crazy. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to really hurt the rating of the song, but there were a couple times. But I got to say that the solo was one of the most interesting solos I've ever heard. And I'll tell you why. Because I didn't realize that a solo was happening until like the third, the, uh -huh. the, the bottom third of it. Uh -huh. Because it was just so entrancing. Yeah that I was like, whoa, this is a cool part. And then I'm like, no, this is a solo. Yeah. And it was like, whoa. Like sonically, these guys were great. And I, I don't know, sometimes with bands, when they have a female singer, it's just, it's always just better. It, it's always better to me when Especially you- Especially like her voice was like, yeah. Nice and safe, and then yeah. it was like the doom metal in there. And so I don't know, just, I really liked it. Yeah, maybe it's because, you know, the, the genre is so dominated by male vocals mm -hmm. that when you hear female vocals, you can actually sing. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. But um, I really, really love that. So, all right, what do you get the song? Ooh, boy, I think it's a, I think it's a nine point eight for me. <sighs> it's a nine point six for me. I did not. I, I'll tell you something. I always say like everybody has biases, but we can all be converted. Like none of us comes to these things like you know, completely objective. Yeah. So I came into this like, oh gosh, a doom metal song. It's going to be slow and trudgy. Good God. Um, you reminded me of Colin when you said that. Yeah, yeah. But I I got to say, this one I converted me. It won me over. Not to doom metal per se, but, to but this at song. least to this song and this band. I, I would like to hear more of their um, their music because I want to know, does she is she featured in all of them? Right, and is it a concept record? You know, that type of thing, because the thing ends with Lady in the Lamp. Yeah. So, um, if anybody, hopefully we can get more Avatarian people that want yeah. the song. So, Or, you know, we're, we'll be done with Patreon week, and, and I'll just we'll just select another one, inshallah. Uh, okay, guys, uh, so 9.6. 
9.8. If you're a Static X fan, check it out. Also, uh, we're starting to upload stuff, uh, some behind the scenes stuff on Patreon. So, uh, sorry, just uploaded another one. It's pretty hilarious. Yeah. Uh, if you want to know why I screwed up the editing job on which video was it? Right. The uh, the Decristianized. It's pretty it pretty, that pretty important video. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> that's okay though. I still love you. You put me in that situation. I I did no such thing. No. Well, go check it yourself. You'll see. Vit out. Sorry out. Gone. People have designated drivers, you know. Yeah. They're I responsible. Did.